Hey everyone! Today we're diving into the incredible story of Jack Legs Diamond, a legendary gangster from the Prohibition era. From impossible escapes to underworld dealings, his life is a roller coaster you won't believe. Let's jump in. Jack Legs Diamond, born Jack Moran on July 10, 1897, hailed from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Diamond's early life was one of poverty and hardship, providing a glimpse into the socio-economic conditions that bred many gangsters of his era. Diamond's parents were Irish immigrants, and the family lived in a working-class neighborhood. The Diamonds had a large family, which made financial stability a constant struggle. His father found work as a laborer, and his mother was a homemaker, often working odd jobs to help make ends meet. The early 20th century working-class neighborhoods of Philadelphia were characterized by hardship, limited opportunities, and cramped living conditions. These neighborhoods were fertile grounds for petty crimes and juvenile delinquency, as many young men sought shortcuts to better their circumstances. In this environment, the allure of easy money and the apparent glamour of a gangster's life held a certain appeal for young men like Diamond. The crushing poverty and the limited economic opportunities led many towards illegal activities as a means of social mobility. Jack Legg's Diamond's initial forays into criminal life began during his youth, where he engaged in petty crimes such as pickpocketing and burglaries. Like many young men in his socioeconomic bracket, Diamond saw crime as a shortcut to escaping poverty. However, it was his involvement in larger, more organized criminal enterprises that marked the real beginning of his notorious career. In the years leading up to the Prohibition era, Diamond found himself connected with bigger names in organized crime, learning the ropes and establishing his reputation as a ruthless yet clever operator. The Prohibition era, 1920 to 1933, created a massive business opportunity for organized crime in America. The outlawing of alcohol production, sale, and transport led to a booming black market. Legs Diamond saw the potential and quickly moved to capitalize on the opportunity. He started by aligning himself with more established figures in the criminal underworld, serving as a hitman and enforcer. His boldness and audacity caught the eye of key power players, and he was gradually entrusted with more responsibility. Diamond's reputation for escaping tricky situations, including arrests and gangland disputes, earned him the nickname Clay Pigeon, highlighting his ability to survive against the odds. His resilience and cunning made him indispensable in the volatile bootlegging business. Eventually, Diamond was running his own bootlegging operations, sourcing liquor from as far away as Europe and the Caribbean, and distributing it throughout New York and beyond. Operating primarily out of New York, Diamond's bootlegging network was extensive. He oversaw the illicit import of whiskey from Canada and rum from the Caribbean. With the help of corrupted officials at the docks and within the transportation sector, Diamond managed to evade law enforcement agencies, successfully moving large quantities of alcohol into the United States. He was also known for his rum-running activities, where high-speed boats would meet larger ships stocked with alcohol in international waters and bring the contraband ashore under the cover of darkness. In addition to importing, Diamond was involved in operating several speakeasies, secret bars where illegal alcohol was sold, and had a significant stake in the brewing and distilling business. His operations made him wealthy and increased his influence in the criminal world, but they also put him on the radar of law enforcement and rival gangs. Diamond had a complicated relationship with other prominent figures of the era. He was both a competitor and a collaborator with other big names in organized crime, such as Dutch Chalps and Charles Lucky Luciano. His operations, particularly in New York, often crossed paths with those of other gangsters, leading to both alliances and violent disputes. In the realm of politics and law enforcement, Diamond's network was just as convoluted. He is said to have had connections with corrupt politicians and law enforcement officials, who turned a blind eye to his activities in exchange for bribes or political favors. This mutually beneficial relationship allowed Diamond greater freedom in his operations and often helped him escape legal repercussions. However, as public sentiment against organized crime grew stronger, these relationships became increasingly strained, setting the stage for his eventual downfall. There were multiple instances where Diamond survived assassination attempts by rival gangsters. In 1930, for instance, he was shot multiple times at the Hotel Monticello in upstate New York, but survived, further amplifying his almost mythical invincibility. On another occasion, Diamond was kidnapped and severely beaten by rivals, yet managed to escape and recover. These incidents contributed to his growing legend, painting him as a figure who seemed untouchable, 
either due to luck, cunning, or some would say, divine intervention. His repeated escapes made headlines, creating a public persona that was equal parts feared and admired. Lex Diamond faced numerous legal challenges, but had a habit of evading conviction, adding another layer to his legendary status. One of the most high-profile cases was his trial for kidnapping, where he was surprisingly acquitted despite strong evidence against him. In other instances, he faced charges ranging from bootlegging to assault, but often managed to avoid conviction through a combination of legal maneuvering, jury tampering, and allegedly corrupt relationships within the legal system. However, Diamond wasn't always able to escape the long arm of the law. He did serve some jail time, including a two-year stint at a penitentiary in the late 1920s for assault and a few other shorter sentences. But even these convictions did little to diminish his reputation. If anything, they contributed to the public's perception of him as a gangster who could even take on the legal system and come out relatively unscathed. The media played a significant role in shaping Legs Diamond's public image. Newspapers often covered his criminal activities, trials, and miraculous escapes with a mixture of awe and disdain. He was at times romanticized as a Robin Hood-like figure, a bootlegging anti-hero in a time of unpopular alcohol prohibition. Other times, he was vilified as a violent gangster, a symbol of the lawlessness and corruption that plagued the era. This mixed portrayal further complicated public perception. On one hand, Diamond became a sort of folk hero, admired for his audacity and cunning. On the other hand, he was also seen as a dangerous criminal, embodying the violence and chaos that came with organized crime. The media's portrayal impacted not just how the public saw Diamond but also how law enforcement prioritized their actions against him. The more notorious he became, the more pressure was exerted on authorities to bring him to justice, culminating in increased efforts to arrest and convict him, which in turn only added to his legend. The life of Jack Legs Diamond came to a sudden and violent end on December 18, 1931, when he was assassinated in a boarding house in Albany, New York. After a night of heavy drinking and partying, Diamond retired to his room, unaware that it would be for the last time. During the early hours of the morning, Gumman entered his room and shot him multiple times. Though Diamond had miraculously survived previous attempts on his life, this time there would be no escape. His death marked the end of an era and news of his assassination was met with a mix of shock, celebration, and for some, a sense of relief. So that's Jack Legs Diamond, a man who lived on the edge of law and lore. Whether you see him as a hero or villain, he's a figure you can't ignore in American history. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Got someone in mind for our next deep dive? Comment below. Until next time.